OK. Got a few more pages transcribed to upload. The next few pages I've got in here are a little more ambiguous in parts. I'm going with what I have. And I'll leave some notes where I wasn't able to transcribe what was written. I know this sounds like a letdown, but this thing is in rough shape. It was stored in a little box in Graham's attic, in the deep southwest where it's humid as Satan's ball sack in the YMCA pool room. Some of the pages have damaged from the ink bleeding. Others are literally covered in what I have to assume is blood. It's aged to a rusty brown color now, but the way it's spattered on the pages, there's not much mistaking it. I will say, the more I read this and got into know my great grandfather, the more I understood what they meant by war is hell. Saving Private Ryan doesn't have shit on what he saw in there. The deaths of hell aren't enough for what some men have subjected others to. I still know nothing of what the creature from the psalm was, whether it may have been an apparition of evil or a primal force of nature. I can't say. I still see the glowing moons in my mind. Every time I close my eyes, they haunt me, mandibles expanding to devour me. Strange as it sounds, I fear that I can feel the creature watching me, no matter what time of day. The feeling of dread doesn't leave my chest, a milestone weighing me to the bottom of this mud-ridden trench. My chest hurts. We suffered many losses this morning when an attack took us by surprise, a gas attack. Though we didn't realize these barbaric weapons had made it to this part of the line. An artillery shell landed a few meters down the trench from my lookout, hitting an unfortunate private hard enough to break his neck when it caught his helmet. For a moment, everyone thought the shell just failed to explode. I'm just thankful I was far enough away that I wasn't caught in the real danger. It was only a moment before some of the soldiers closer to the shell began to cough, clutching their chest in pain. It began to spread even further through the trench, a faint smell undercutting the gunpowder scent that had become so commonplace. It reminded me of grinding pepper for a meal, coarse and making me feel like I was going to sneeze. The pain hit me immediately, like I had swallowed an entire pin cushion in one gulp. I could remember getting tangled in some swamp vines back home as a child, hunting with my father. The feeling of their thorns tearing at my skin now felt like it was being internalized. My mind worked quickly, praise be, as I was able to get my gas mask on relatively quick. Unfortunately, I had already been hit with enough to be in pain, so the mask only prevented further injury. In the meantime, I ran, pulling a soldier nearby with me as I coughed and hacked, trying to get them out of range. Maybe 20 meters was all I made before collapsing. I vomited in my mask from coughing so hard, blood mixing with mucus. My breathing is still ragged, but stable now. The poor man I tried carrying out wasn't as lucky, with blood coming out even thicker as he tried to cough the gas out. Every cough led him to gas for more air, desperately hoping this would be one of fresh oxygen. But the gas was insidious, spreading through the trenches. He died gasping in a puddle on the ground. The explosions began to go off in the no man's land, loud and rapid. I lifted my head up to see if it was a bombing or an attempted charge while we were gassed. But what it really was filled me with more dread. Our own men, the ones who were too late to put on their mask, had sought freedom from the gas in their oxygen-deprived terror. They climbed from the trench, venturing out into no man's land before anyone could stop them. Many fell immediately, twitching on the ground as their lungs gave their last dying gasps, 
Others activated the minds without realizing it, bringing them a sweet release of death if they were fortunate. For others, it only increased their suffering, blowing off arms or legs. One fortunate soul fell face first into one, dying immediately, more mercy than the others could beg for. Artillery shells fell not long after, likely already aimed by the enemy in the event this happened. All we could do was watch our brothers die, choking in the mud. I pray for their souls to find the embrace of heaven. Jessica, I miss you. I hope you're well back home. I pray that the horrors I've seen are kept at bay here, far away from your innocence. The things I've seen here have left me changed, unsure of what may be real or not. My chest is painted even more, though I'm now feeling the effects of my skin and eyes even more. It feels as though my eyes have been held open for hours against my will, dry and stinging with every movement. Even worse, my skin was blistered, red and peeling, even where my fatigues were covering me. The pain felt like an awful sunburn, though every time anything brushed me, it felt as though someone was scraping broken glass across my back. Seeing some of the other men, I'm lucky. A soldier was brought by me, skin sloughing off in sheets from the chemical burns, screaming like a million demons were trying to escape his lungs. Despite my injuries, I had to be on guard duty last night. The other man, who was supposed to be on shift, was currently scattered across no man's land after the morning's attack. The night was bright once again, and from my cover, I could see much of no man's land, though clouds would occasionally bring darkness again. Only a little before midnight, I was scanning the perimeter keeping an eye to make sure no enemy troops snuck up on us. The wind tore through the trench, giving me a chill that only hurt the burns more. I was shivering when I noticed the movement, perhaps 20 meters away, and strained my eyes to see through the dark. As the moon finally broke cover, the perpetrator was illuminated. A soldier was staring at me, eyes twinkling in the moonlight, almost glaring right into mine. I caught my breath, standing to get up and to take aim at him. It only took a moment to look through my scope to see that the soldier posed no danger. The bright, vacant eyes never blinked, staring into the abysmal darkness towards me. I could see that the lower jaw was missing, one of the many victims of the minefield. As fast as it appeared, another gust of strong wind came, turning it over face first into the ground. Can't say I wasn't grateful for the breeze. I wish that was the end of the horrors I saw last night. Those soldiers were still scattered about on the field, beginning to blend with the smell of death we were all so accustomed to already. I was keeping a keen eye on the river Psalm, making sure that the moon eyed creature wasn't going to appear to feast on the, their corpses. Reflections of the moon glimmered and played off the water though, leaving any efforts to pick out the creature pointless, if it was even there. Eventually, sleep started to take me, but I shook myself awake by focusing on the river still. The rushing water was flowing, only rippling on the surface but the strong current was undoubtedly carrying away anything caught under. Moonlight dancing off the currents was beautiful though, mesmerizing in the way every little ripple created a new pattern, dozens of new moons on the surface, leading down the river. Clouds began to overtake the light again, the dark shadow quickly coasting over the field to cover us. When the shadow overtook the river, Bringing darkness ever closer, I was hit with a sight that filled me with pure terror that I never felt in my life. The moons in the water did not disappear with the clouds cover 
take over. Instead, they stayed under the surface, swaying with the current through the length of the river. White, bulbous eyes were glowing faintly, with a few ascending from the water, moving those jointed spear-like legs nimbly over mines. One came close enough to get the head that terrified me only a while before. I saw the mandibles pierce through the skull, sticking it on before lifting it to the gaping mouth. The pale moons turned a deep red once more as the decaying blood was fed on, this time giving a cemetery of orbs across the ruined battlefield. I was memorized by them. The orbs went back to a soft glow, sliding back into the water with little sound or sign that they were ever there. Dozens of them, all slithering back into the dark, murky waters of the Somme. In this moment, I knew not if it was the shock of what I had just seen or my injuries. I fear it was far more real than I could ever hope though. As the cloud cover slid away from the moon again, revealing a battlefield now picket clean of the corpses there just moments before, they spoke to me. I know not if I was the only one that was spoken to, but the words have haunted me since leaving me no rest as they repeat in my mind. I don't know if they're still speaking to me or if it's my imagination making me hear them. Even over the shelling though, like a deep, primeval growl of something that shouldn't be heard, I still feel their whispers as I write these words. Bring me more.